and welcome to Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Atik Sabinski. On this week's show, we're going to look at the events of Thanksgiving and Black Friday weekend. Against the familiar backdrop of shoppers engaged in fierce competition, we saw people coming together in mutual aid and solidarity. We'll look at occupiers feeding the hungry on Thanksgiving, giving away goods on Black Friday, and joining striking Walmart workers on the picket line. We also have a special report from California, where once again education is at odds with the interests of Wall Street. On Thanksgiving Day, November 22nd, 3,500 meals were served to hurricane survivors by Occupy Sandy volunteers under the guidance of the Occupied Kitchen, a working group that has served the movement since its beginnings in Zuccotti Park. People traveled in from as far away as Texas and Indiana to contribute to the efforts to serve Thanksgiving Day meals to those still without power or worse, without homes. Others trucked in donations of badly needed items such as canned goods and medical supplies. I got involved um, way back when we had the park in Scotty and uh, have been really touched by the uh, sense of community that this group has and so I just keep trying to help out with however I can. I can't celebrate this day knowing that other people are just not able to have uh, celebrated Thanksgiving and be together with their families. They've lost everything. And, I uh, just came up here to support them and make uh, as best a day as they can have. I'm from the Lower Hudson Valley, and uh, my name is Richard. Uh, we got whacked last year with Hurricane Irene, so a lot of us up there said it's time to pay back to everybody who helped us out. So I'm Brent, this is Pete. We came from uh, Connecticut. I know for me it was a matter of enjoying um, some time with family and friends, but I just thought what a great opportunity just to come down and lend a hand to uh, some folks that need some help and offer some encouragement and some hope, so I'm glad I'm here. So this is a comms dispatch hub where we take in, uh, got a hotline for people to phone in their needs, their orders for meals, and also to uh, volunteer to help out in the kitchen here, help out with uh, deliveries. So we've got a lot of people offering to be drivers. We can ring them back and uh, uh, arrange for them to take the meals at the right times to the right locations. We have the Clinton and Jacoby hubs that are dealing with non-food items, but we're all sharing and linking together to make sure that there's enough cars and volunteers and goods in all of the different locations. Know that an order's already to go out for 900, and we've got orders for 700 and 200, so how many people are actually going to get fed today? Is it 1,000? It's, it's fantastic. This is what, it's, this is what uh, mutual aid is all about. Not charity, mutual aid. And I've been here since about 7 o'clock last night. Any sleep at all? No. How much did you sleep? A uh, couple of hours. But I'll be okay. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I just completed a 25 hour street day. Uh, pulled it all night and doing a, with wonderful energy. And the people here are just lovely. Uh, they had the energy that kept you up all night and you just couldn't stop it. It was pervasive. The Walmart workers are forced to work on Thanksgiving to get a, a jump start on Black Friday. So those of us in OWS decided that uh, in solidarity with some of the Walmart workers who are organizing, we're going to send them little gift baskets and just say, sorry you have to work on the holidays, you know, here's a little token of our appreciation and we'll be there tomorrow to support your organization in the future. Uh, Occupy is kind of like working in the kitchen. <laughs> anyway, because it's like there's a necessity that kind of shapes the organization of people. And it's very like like geese, you know, when geese fly south, different leaders emerge at different times to, you know, to form the point of the triangle. But the leader is a necessity to go south. And that's what I love. There's a necessity to help people here and the necessity to do something about this country, you know, are what are happening for. And that is energizing. That's why I don't need any sleep. We're not going to Zuccotti today. Oh, we're not, huh? No. Okay. It's sad. It breaks my heart, but um, it, the, the need in the affected areas was really dire. So we're still sending out over 4,000 meals today through Rockaways, Coney Island, Staten Island. So a lot of good will be done today. We'll celebrate in Zuccotti another day. Well, actually, we think we're going to be needed more after Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving, everybody's out there helping. Sure, we're helping. We're helping in a big way. But 
other people are going to stop helping. Occupy Sandy is still going to be helping after all the crowds have left. So, no, we're just starting. <laughs> so, you, so you came here expecting to get three plates and instead... Instead, I got enough for everybody in Seagate. And that's a wonderful thing. Because I know so many people who don't have. And it's great. It's simply wonderful. And Sister Connie is filling up my plates. I'm filling up my truck as we speak. And I'm going to bless the neighborhood. How are you today? Okay. Excuse me. If we can't use it tonight, we'll use it tomorrow for lunch or even for dinner because we possibly probably won't get any but um we'll freeze it i'm putting it in the refrigerator and store it for tomorrow <laughs> And I want to see you. Go ahead, Mom. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. The nation's largest private employer had its first strike on Black Friday, November 23rd, as 28 Walmart stores in 12 states went on strike. Protesting low wages, underemployment, lack of benefits, dangerous working conditions, sexual harassment and company retaliation against workers attempting to organize or even speak out, rank and file workers were joined on the picket line by labor activists, including members of Occupy Wall Street's Labor Outreach Committee and 99 pickets. The many actions of the day included a picket in the city of Paramount, California that drew over 1,500 demonstrators and included an act of civil disobedience at which several were arrested. Okay, my name is Carlton Smith, and yes, I'm here on strike. <laughs> Along with some more of my fellow associates, I worked here in the store, it's 2110 Paramount, California. I've been an associate here for 16 years. I want to thank all of you here for being here today and supporting Walmart workers and all working families as we speak up for better working conditions. Good job and an end to retaliation for experience when we stand up for a better life. I'm Reverend Eric Lee. I'm from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Greater Los Angeles, Dr. King's organization. And if he were alive today, he'd be at the front of this line protesting against Walmart. found that something like 40% of the Walmart employee base is eligible for food stamps because their wages are so low that they still qualify. What that means is the, that the public is subsidizing this corporation in, so that they can make money at the expense of working people. Mic check! Mic check! Attention shoppers! Attention shoppers! We're here today! We're here today! To support Walmart workers! To support Walmart workers! American taxpayers! American taxpayers! Subsidize Walmart! Subsidize Walmart! <laughs>
Under California state law, I warn you your, and your organization and all individuals here who are acting with you that you are trespassing. I revoke any license you may have had it to be here. I direct you to leave Walmart property immediately. If you do not do so, I will call the police to have you removed. Thank you. Today is Black Friday. That means it's the biggest shopping day of the year. And it's a day when Walmart will take notice that they need to treat their 1.4 million workers with respect. Walmart heirs, these six people have more money. 50 million Americans combined. That's not right, and that needs to change, and that's why we're here today. There's a new spirit in the labor movement, and it's a lot of it is due to Occupy, and that's why they've welcomed us so much. The fact that we identified the labor movement as a central organization of the 99%, we were the first mass group that had any influence in general in the media that said labor unions are a good thing. <laughs> and they are very, very happy about that and they have been very uh, supportive as a result. Today we wanted to politicize and educate the people on the importance of getting uh, corporations like Walmart out of our community. One, for the smaller businesses that it, that it kind of puts out of business. Last year on Black Friday, they made $50 million, but they refused to pay their employees decent wages and, and a lot of different things that are going on, like hazard insurance they take out on employees, where, say, an employee, a rank and file employee passes away. They cash out on these insurance policies, but they don't pay the families any money. So we need corporations like this out of our communities. And what was workers out inside who didn't know that this was happening across the country? and have not been organized and are not walking out today, I'm sure it's giving them encouragement and courage. Uh, and they will at some point be walking out. And eventually Walmart will have a union. There have been lawsuits against Walmart by some of the women who've worked for them. Uh, uh, a, a group of employees around the country um, a petition uh, not to be required to, to work overtime uh, for Black Friday. Uh, events because many of them were, were called away from uh, family a uh, holiday. I mean, this corporation uh, promotes itself by claiming that it will come into a community and provide jobs and provide low uh, price uh, uh, commodities and, and, and articles in the community that people can afford, uh, which is largely true. But what they don't explain when they're coming into that community is their impact will have a tremendous fallout on small businesses, independent businesses in that community who will be driven out of business because they can't compete against the price scale of a monopoly corporation. That in turn creates actually greater unemployment than Walmart's employment of, of, of people who come in the door as employees for them. That means that the tax base goes down for that community. That means that services and programs of their city or community get cut because there's not enough finance available to maintain even the public schools. I mean, LOC uh, has been doing this all along, going to workers' struggles and building ties to Occupy Wall Street. But now with strike debt, which is raising an issue that affects 75% of the country, and with Occupy Sandy, where people are getting embedded in poor communities, we have finally moved away from our activist base into the mass base. And that's what we've needed to do for a long time. And all of a sudden, we're doing it on three fronts and getting terrific responses. And we're in the press again. Of course, they're going to attack us, the press. They like us when we do things that don't challenge the 1%. Well, they say uh, rolling jubilee is just good capitalism. And Occupy Sandy, they see as relief rather than and charity rather than mutual aid. They don't realize that we're organizing for a fight at the same time that we're doing relief work because we're going to have to fight or we're going to get what Katrina got, which is gentrification, 
running the poor people out of town, getting them out of public housing, tearing down public housing, privatizing the public schools, and busting the teachers' union. On Black Friday, November 23rd, activists with the Brooklyn Free Store set up in front of the Atlantic Center Mall in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Free Store is a collective that provides a space for people to give away and take items free of charge. They sought to demonstrate to Black Friday shoppers an alternative to conventional commerce. Uh, and we're just setting up a bunch of free stuff for people to uh, take on this Black Friday uh, Spend No Money Day. It's called a free store, and everything is for free. Yeah. Pick whatever you need, whatever you like. We do it uh, every Friday uh, between 12 and 6 at Von King Park in Bed-Stuy. It's a little smaller than this because we got a lot of donations like for today but yeah come check it out so i was trying to get here by by sunrise i really thought that would be a nice touch to like be setting up the tent and having the banners flying in the morning rays but um got a little bit delayed getting the stuff on the bike trailer there's a lot of overconsumption in america and that does nobody any good i mean it does the corporations good and like the bankers but the people don't benefit and the people would much rather have free stuff People are really receptive to having, you know, like they're really excited to see that people are willing to go out and do, like, move this amount of stuff out into the public area where people can take it. Beautiful. I like it. I just took the address, so I have things also, and I will, will come and give things. Wonderful. Yeah. I think this is great. This is great. This is great. So you could just come and take something. That's wonderful. That's a blessing. That's it a is. Blessing. That's, that's, this is love. This is weird. And this is what we're supposed to do. Not, you know, not me, 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 but share. Share the love. Share the love because God is love. And so this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah we worked out a deal where uh, we talked to the mall security and they said that we could have this little space. So we've been like shuttling stuff back and forth, pushing cartfuls of things. Um, we got this box truck full of, like a full load of things. Um, and like we emptied it out on this curb and then we're like still making trips back and forth. I don't know how many it's been, but it's been a lot. So um, we were unloading a bunch of books. This cop car rolls up um, and they were start, they're asking us a bunch of questions like where we're from. A lot of, they're just being very aggressive um, interrogating us. And um, I don't know that like everything that every explanation that we gave them of what we we're trying to do they seemed like disgusted by and were shaking their heads like as though like how could we get away with this um, and when we tried to explain what we're doing they just told us that they weren't going to let us do anything that we wanted to <laughs> in those words is in those, that exactly those were the words they said we we're not going to let you do anything that you want to <laughs> so. so what did you do um we're like oh okay well we're gonna um we got some more things to move around so and just sort of like kept putting stuff out, packing and moving. <laughs> Is it this cop car here? It's this, the very one, yeah. Have you had any more exchanges with these police? Uh, no, I believe they're right there, walking towards us. <laughs> yep. 5 p.m. <laughs> 5 p.m., hopefully. <laughs> we just want Definitely as much stuff to get taken by people who need it. On November 15th, dozens of activists with the group Occupy the Regions protested at the University of California's Board of Regents meeting in San Francisco. The protest was against the handing over of millions of dollars of tax revenues from the newly passed Proposition 30 to Wall Street banks, rather than to reducing student fees and tuitions, which have tripled over the last 10 years. 
California voters approved Proposition 30 this past election day. It raised taxes for the next seven years on individuals who make more than $250,000 a year and promised to provide educational funding and relief for the recent fee and tuition hikes. The regions blamed these hikes on a bad economy. However, a new report by UC Berkeley doctoral students instead links them to financial practices of the regions themselves. Between 2003 and 2007, the regions started using interest rate swaps, the same exotic instruments that crippled the economy in 2008. They did this to issue bonds to finance the creation of three new medical centers. These bad bets have cost the school $57 million, which could rise to $250 million over the next three decades. The debt was collateralized by the tuition and fee hikes. Activists compared the situation to that of the city of Oakland, which is suing its creditor banks, and characterized the region's board as a revolving door for Wall Street. Regents Peter Taylor was a managing director for Lehman Brothers, and Regent Monica Lozano is currently on the board of Bank of America, a position for which she has received $1.5 million. Bank of America stands to make as much as $28 million in an interest rate swap in UC San Francisco, according to the report. Bank of America is also one of the banks under investigation for LIBOR manipulation. I'm now going to begin public comment. The regents appreciate your observations and comments. The new city is losing $10 million a year through risky derivative swaps made worse by illegal market manipulation by Wall Street banks. By failing to renegotiate the swaps and pursue legal options against the banks that broke the law, the UC is leaving up to $200 million on the table. An independent actuarial analysis has concluded that UC could be saving up to $1 billion in costs over the next four years if they simply use the same methodology that every other major pension system in the country uses. The main recommendation of the report that was made is that UC should look into renegotiation and litigation against the banks that hold our interest rate swaps. Is CEO Lorette's continued multi-hundred thousand dollar bonuses on top of a 1.1 million dollar salary worth it? This is something that the city of San Francisco San Francisco Art Museum did with leadership from two of your members, uh, Regent Schilling and Regent Newsom, and saved $40 million on it. The $167 million to top management uh, is just shameful. They already make over $200,000. The reason we have the losses is because Wall Street banks have manipulated interest rates illegally. Both of the owners of our interest rate swaps, Bank of America and Deutsche Bank, are under federal investigation. And Deutsche Bank has, has already admitted complicity in this illegal interest rate manipulation. And the whole Prop 30 mess, your first reaction is to raise student fees after the state of California trusted you to do the right thing? What is wrong with you? And why wouldn't Peter Taylor even provide an answer to the Thank question? Next I think I'm going to finish this Mr. question. Here. Would folks like to hear me finish my question? So I think I'm going to finish my question. And my question is, why didn't Peter Taylor even answer the question of why UC has not considered renegotiation or litigation? We deserve an answer, and this region's body needs to act because hundreds of millions of dollars are going to Wall Street profits while students are on the hook for tuition hikes and cuts. And we're going to go on the offensive. We're going to demand a rollback, not keeping the fees at where they are, but a rollback of the tuition hikes to 2009. Democrats now have a super majority in both houses, and they have no excuse. They can vote in February for t taxing the rich, and we're not going to accept no for an answer from them or from you.
no fees. Education must be free, no cuts. No fees. Education must be free, no cuts. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you have to say about the show, and if you'd like to lend a hand. Our number is 646-580-8446, and our email is info at occupypublicaccesstv.com. We'd like to close with this video from Label It Yourself, an autonomous, grassroots, decentralized campaign designed to fill the gap left by the U.S. government's failure to label food that may contain genetically modified organisms. Enjoy! and shop wisely. I'm Atik Zabinski.